Hey guys and welcome to the Igloo today and today we're going to be talking about the MitroTik 5 port desktop switch with 1 gigabit ethernet and 4 lanes of 10 gigabit with SFP plus. Now I'm going to get right into it. This little monster as I'm going to call it is probably one of the best things that I've had upgraded so far. So before I had a just a 10 gigabit switch. It only cost me 38 bucks, but then I upgraded to this recently, which currently right now on Amazon is $127.53 plus shipping. Now, I think it comes from Eastern Europe, but at the same time, like you can have different shipping proprietors, but these things were sold out for so many times. So I bought this immediately when I saw that it was up and I have been loving it so far. Currently, my room is super quiet. I don't have to deal with it. And if you want to see the other parts that are in this material list, they'll be up in the card description as well. So the other thing that I got was a 38 US dollar package of two 10 gigabit SFP plus cards on top of it that use PCI 8. And that video is in there and you guys can honestly see on how loud it is, but that's not important to this little switch that is there. Indicator lights for everything working is on the side as well as a hard reset button as well. This is also built with redundancy in mind, so you can actually have it plugged in two different ways with two different outsource power connections, or if you have that capability in your room, then I would recommend it. But if you don't and you just plug it in twice, don't do it because that's just dumb. If they have something that is for two different breaker sets, then I would do it, okay? Especially if you like to have safety and redundancy in that kind of manner, or you have your secondary on a UDP power source or something in that type of regard. But we're going to get more into it. It's right out of the box connectivity when it comes to most of the setup. You really don't need to worry about anything when it comes to like everything that you've been finding for inside the actual setup. So normally what you would do with a 10 gigabit version of a similar version that is, let's say, for example, you got it from enterprise parts and you just got your switch online from an enterprise thing. Most people clear out the OS when, when it comes to it. So you're going to have to boot up like a form of OS, like boot router OS or something like that in particular so that it can keep to that. And that would be also to the specifications of that actual item that you would be having. Now, again, out of the box, it's pretty straightforward. It gives you 10 gigabit speeds and there's a lot of things that are having a benefit to it. But if you want to personalize your things, you can easily go to the link. It should be the top link that will be below for converting your router OS so that you can have safety securities, bandwidth controls, and a few other things that are for that, which again, that are for if you use Winbox or you use something like, um, what, what else uh, besides Winbox? You can use Winbox, you can use the console command control configuration, and uh, if it's already built into your modem's configuration, you can actually add that to the network on top of it. If you are more conversed in cloud compute and cloud switching when it comes to it, especially if you are an NDI developer or something like that. Again, you would already understand that this is pretty cheap for a setup that most people are going to be looking after, especially if you're using fiber. Fiber is really awesome and I can't wait to upgrade for it because what came in the package for me for my cards is just copper lines and I think fiber is the next step when it comes to interconnectivity and I think that that would be really good. Now again you don't need to learn all this you really don't honestly it's plug and play when it comes to most of this. You you really don't need to do this at all, but there's an instruction sheet that comes inside the box if you are wanting to do more, all right? So the next few things that we're going to be talking about with this is that it's dead quiet. All the electronics and everything are put in if you are willing to upgrade the heatsink MOSFET. All you really need to do is just put some Arctic Silver 5 on. It's very easy to maintain. It's pro you you probably don't even need to do it once you get it out of the box because again, it's it's just a passive heat sink that's on side 
the switch itself and you can change it to not just only be like unregulated but also regulated on top of it now there's a few other things that you need to make sure that you read out especially for different uh, setups that you're going to be having if you are going to be installing a card onto your system any type of card or anything else like that that doesn't already have 10 gigabit already on it okay you got to remember that it actually takes some extra PCI lanes if you're going to be going to 10 gigabits. So you got to make sure that you have a compatible device. If you do not have a compatible device and you're trying to have this gaming PC, streaming PC set up, it's not going to do its justice. Like right now, concurrently, I have a 4790K and my graphics card is actually had to be dumped to the uh, a regular like PCIe slot instead of a PCI Express slot because this actually required to have a slot that was Express in order for you to do that. So again, make sure you have the proper board and everything else if you want to support SFP plus 10 gigabits on the card because again, most motherboards will not come pre-installed with a, an SFP like plus port unless you're dealing with enterprise level equipment in most regards most like mainstream computers that are at home gaming computers at home they will not have this option this option is very expensive the port is very thick inside normally when it comes to like most of the setup the cables are very expensive and if you're going from like a router or a modem at home or a conversion of something of that in between they don't want to have that capability to just add that onto the modem in itself so you're going to have to have something as a conversion which is a ethernet conversion to sfp plus which this also offers now again if you're going to be having this your initial connection to the mitrotech winbox is going to be a simple 192.168.88.1 and it will have no password so again if you are going to be wanting to have uh, security concerns i would highly recommend you going on to the actual management access software putting it in Make sure you have something of the lines of, let's say, for example, you are having your Winbox. I use Winbox because I, I think it's pretty easy. It's in any type of Windows. Now, if you're using something different, like let's say you are using Mac or Linux, it says it also in the link where you can get appropriate software for what you need and for everything that you desire. Again, that's for you guys as well. That's just a little pamphlet that's there. I mainly just use Winbox on top of everything else. Now, if you are wanting to upgrade, let's say you want to expand your network and you want to have like multiple forms of communication in your box, your server box, maybe your house, maybe you want to have this in a completely different room. You got to make sure that you pay attention to different types of connection. Now, if you're going to be running this to your house and then you have like a local 10 gig and then you want to send it out through the network that way, you got to make sure that your pass throughs are going to be at least like cat seven, like ethernet when you transfer it over from SFP plus, because I don't think you can transfer it through the walls as effectively. I know for fiber you can, but I know for copper, it, it's a very short distance because you start losing connectivity signal over that short period of time versus in fiber lines and also just cat seven. There, there's limitations when it comes to it as well, but you have to be very careful when it comes to this kind of setup. Again, I don't know how much power that this actually powers through the box itself. I would assume very little because of its size and also because of the power supply, which is coming with it. I don't think there's that much power through Ethernet when it comes to the specifications for this. So again, you're going to need to get your power if you're putting power through Ethernet through the lines and for what you need to get done. If you guys like this kind of setup, please leave a like, leave a comment down below. If you really like my stuff as well, I have some t-shirts. I'm going to be making a blanket. A few other things on Teespring. Link is also down below. I've been working pretty much on just my main designs and getting everything else done. And I think I'm going to have some different things just besides gaming in the near future when it comes to a few things. So if you guys like that as well, I mean, just leave your comment as well on that. So have a good one, guys.